Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Jake Strand. And I'm Tracy McRae. For most women under age 65, a visit to the gynecologist or primary care provider usually includes a pap smear to check for cervical cancer risk. A pap smear is done by scraping cells from the back of the cervix to check for signs of abnormality. But in the past five years, a new test has been approved to screen for cervical cancer risk, the HPV test. The HPV test screens directly for the human papilloma virus, which is the cause of almost all cervical cancers. Nearly 13,000 women in the U.S. are diagnosed with cervical cancer each year, so improved screening could be an important step towards saving lives. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic gynecologist Dr. Margaret Long. Welcome to the program, Dr. Long. It's nice to meet you. Right. Thank you. Well, first of all, tell us what is HPV? I know it's the human papilloma virus, but what is it? It is a virus that can infect Many people, um, almost half of the population, actually gets exposed to HPV at some point in time. Um, For some people, it doesn't cause any disease, and in some individuals, it can cause cancer in the cervix and other locations. And and one of the things that has certainly come about, I think a lot in the media, there's been vaccinations aimed at HPV, right. and we'll talk about that, as well as testing. So how, when we think about the HPV test specifically, how is that different from a normal procedure like a pap smear? Okay. So a pap test looks for abnormal cells on the cervix, and it's been a wonderful test. It saved a lot of lives, but it's a fairly difficult test to read. Whereas the HPV test is more of a yes or no answer, it um, is a lot easier to run, and it's um, harder to mess up. Well, explain the difference then. Okay. Uh, what what happens when you're having a pap smear? Uh, mm-hmm. You're taking cells when you're doing an HPV test? Are you not taking cells? The, the collection for a current pap and the current HPV test is the same. Mm-hmm. At some point in time in the future, hopefully we'll have an easier way of collecting the HPV uh, sample. Mm -hmm. But for now, the patient's experience in the office is about the same. I would take one comment, though. When we're collecting cells, it's not as dramatic as a scrape. I mean, it's it's not. I mean, it kind of feels like a scrape. Well, it's I'm just saying it's a part of your body that. (laughs) People don't touch very often, and, you know, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but for, you know, a minute, half a minute of not great experience, you're looking at three to five years of... Absolutely worth it. No cancer risk or Absolutely minimal cancer worth risk. It. Yeah. But right. what's a better word to use than scrape? I like collect. Okay. I think it's a better... From it's now a nice, on, it's I a will nicer use word. collect. <laughs> Collector sampling. Scrape, <laughs> scrape sounds terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and it's, it's helpful. I think it's important to distill a lot of these myths because I think as you're talking about the idea of a pap smear when you're looking at the cells itself, you're really looking for, for things that have already gone a bit haywire, right, in the right. cell, whereas this type of test done well, you can detect the presence of the virus maybe before it's caused problems. Is that a fair right. way to think about right. it? Right, right. Part of the beauty of the test is if it's negative, then your risk for cervical cancer is very low for many years, which is why you can do it less often. Whereas a single pap test, it certainly reduces your risk of having cancer at the moment, but it's um, not good enough to wait a long period of time before you repeat it. What are currently, what are the recommended guidelines for both? Okay. So for a standard pap test, it's every three years, unless you've had an abnormal result, in which case it's more often. For the HPV test only, it's every three years, once you've gotten to be age 30. And for um, women who are above 30 that can have the HPV test and the pap test together um, every five years. It's kind of confusing. It is. Because if the pap pap smear and the HPV test both every three years, have these not been done at the same time to this point anyway? Uh, Some providers have been doing both of them, and that's been our practice here at the clinic for a while. And do you, when you think about um, who should get which one, you know, are there different recommendations from society? So you mentioned sort of our policy here at the clinic, sort of other places. Does that vary a bit? So... Young women have HPV very frequently, and a lot of them will get rid of the HPV virus or at least keep it quiet enough so it doesn't show up on the test. And so um, 
we don't do HPV testing for young women because a lot of them are going to have the virus and their chance of having cancer is really, really low. But in older women, if they have the HPV virus, then their cancer risk is higher. So. You said it, the HPV might not be present enough, strong enough what to show up as... Right. What is happening there? Is it going away? Is it like a regular virus that your body has it, but then you get better and you don't have the cold virus anymore? I think of it a lot like um, varicella or chickenpox, that children will get chickenpox called varicella when they're young. They'll get over their acute disease. And then when they're 70, they'll have shingles. And so HPV probably acts like that too, where you get an infection, most women will clear that infection and hopefully it will stay quiet forever or go away. But for some women, um, they can't suppress it, they can't um, beat the virus down and so they're more likely to have problems from it. And so that's why you need to keep having your pap smears or cervical right. exams all right, so what are those guidelines? When can you stop having the pap smear? So right now the recommendation is age 65 for women who have not had abnormal cells on their cervix before that required treatment. So if, at, let's say 10 years ago, at age 55, a woman had a biopsy that showed some severely abnormal cells in her cervix, she would need to be screened for 20 years. So you don't want to stop at 65. But if you've had your cervical cancer screening for decades, it's always been normal. Continuing beyond age 65 is not helpful. Okay, and, and I think you brought up a great analogy about the varicella and the, 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 the shingles in which, you know, we have a shingles vaccine. Right. We also have a vaccine for HPV, which becomes right. really important to do that beforehand. Right. Before people are coming to contact. So I'm glad right. you brought up that. Right, yes. That I mean, it, it's better to prevent the HPV in the yeah. first place rather than keeping track of it later. Well, we've been talking about pap smears and HPV tests with Mayo Clinic gynecologist, Dr. Margaret Long. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Long. Thank you.